Testing, testing, one, two, three. Here we are live. I hope everybody is doing just great. And I guess I'll get a text if you can't hear me. Let me know. I'm just going to jump straight in. So much to cover. Welcome to Uptober. This is an exciting time. Yesterday, you could see I couldn't contain myself. I had a funny feeling things are going to explode. However, I didn't expect Bitcoin to go up over 10%. In a few hours, that was crazy. I've been up since 3 a.m., so I'm really tired, but I'm going to power through this anyway. So bear with me, everybody. Disclaimer, none of this is investment advice. This is edutainment with math, money, and freedom. So let's go. We have a lot to cover. Everybody's asking, okay, so what happened? What happened? Well, it's a new month. It's a new quarter. Foot is gone. $241 million of shorts were liquidated. Crazy buying is happening, game theory is in play, and we're going to talk about all of that today. So what are the main reasons it surged? I think it was the key catalyst was, of course, uh, you know, the Fed chairman saying, we have no intention of banning crypto assets, Bitcoin, etc. And that kind of gave everybody, it's like, okay, trying to jump in. And somehow overnight, big money mobilized. Maybe companies had plans to buy Maybe companies needed to wait till the 1st of October before they could unleash funds and do whatever. But that clearly happened. So when we look at the day so far, it is insane. Talk about green. And when you see uh, Bitcoin, 48,000. Well, crazy. Uh, excuse me. It's now 48,390. So it's gone up another 200 bucks since I just did this a few minutes ago. Um, so 48,390. Up 200. Who knows where it'll be by the time I'm done here today? We might even get to 49,000 at this rate. It would not surprise me. Ethereum up nearly 10%. Solana, dark green. And uh, Elrond, dark green. Good. Somebody asked me yesterday, why don't you like a Luna? I don't know if it's anything to do with why it's red today, but certain things I believe are faster horses. And that is the market. But what's really more interesting to look at is what happened last quarter. This uh, big thank you as well to Sanjay for sending me this. Actually, he sent me a different version, but this is a, a slightly uh, better representative version of exactly what's going on. So if you look at the last quarter, the last 90 days, you can see Ethereum Classic, as usual, red, Doge, red, etc. And you can see some big names that were up huge. Ethereum, only 55% for 90 days. Cardano, 62%. Bitcoin. 41%, Solana, 378%, etc., etc. et cetera. Binance, 46%, XRP is up, Luna is up, Avax, Avalanche is up, Algorand. So a lot of the smart contract platforms did really well, but that's kind of what happened. So you're beginning to see a bit of a separation between kind of the things that work and the things that maybe are not working. So who knows if meme stocks will ever return, meme tokens, I don't know but uh, they're all hurting right now. Now, what else is going on? So let's talk about inflation. Here, core inflation rose 3.6% in August from a year ago. This is the biggest jump in more than 30 years. So another new all-time inflation high. And personal spending increased by 0.8%, slightly higher than the estimate. So people are buying, prices are going up. Interesting. Well, what's happening over with our colleagues in Europe? And hopefully we have some Europeans in the audience right now. Uh, European inflation hits a 13-year high. And this is a big headache for the European Central Bank. But you know what? You know what Lagarde's going to do? Hit the money printer. Print more money. That's what everybody's going to do. It is ridiculous. But even more ridiculous than that is this. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you just have to step away and say, has the world gone crazy? And like two days ago, I did a video. I was like, is the world broken? Well, Check this out. This guy, Jerry Nadler, he wants to mint these platinum coins, trillion dollar coins to pay off debt. You know what? Just create a few new coins worth a trillion dollars each. Maybe 10 of them, 20 of them. Make them nice and pretty. And uh, maybe something like this. And just hand them out. Say, hey, China, we owe you six trillion. Here's six of these. Enjoy. Bye. You know, it, it's just... <sighs> the point is, you can't just print money out of nowhere. 
On the one hand, they don't even need uh, an act of Congress to even do this, which is mind boggling in itself. But it shows you, it's like this platinum coin would be like a meme coin, just printing it out of thin air, out of nothing. And it shows you how broke the fiat system is. And the fact that somebody like Jerry Nadler, who knows financial services, been around the markets for more than 50 years, is saying this type of stuff. So if it does happen, really, it'll make, I think Lynn Alden said earlier today, it'll make fiat systems and fiat countries look like banana republics. That's it. You couldn't make this up. Anyway, back to some more good news. El Salvador mined their first volcano Bitcoin, which is cool. So there is a market for, you know, clean Bitcoins uh, from pure renewable energies. And there's a couple of companies in North America that do that now. And now El Salvador, but they're probably going to hodl them as well. And we're going to talk about hodling and the impact that has on many things. But before we do that, let's talk about game theory on. So Iran has lifted its ban on Bitcoin mining, instituted in May. Obviously, summers get kind of toasty there. Um, I was in the Middle East a couple of years ago, and it wasn't even summertime, and temperatures were way above 45 degrees Celsius. So I can imagine what July and August are like. But anyway, the um, Bitcoin mining farms are back online. And here we have this whole game theory of Bitcoin. Governments, sovereigns, are getting involved in the game. You got your El Salvador's and your Iran's and your U Ukraine's and Kazakhstan's, and there's no putting this toothpaste paste back in the tube. So uh, that, that's uh, good news. Now I know as well the reason why Iran are doing this is to overcome the embargoes that they have in place. But anyway, it's all goodness. So let's talk about this too. This is one of the uh, Fed leaders from Minneapolis. And he believes the Fed will not need to raise interest rates until 2024. And there are opinions that this is one of the reasons for Bitcoin's rise today. I don't think so. I think Bitcoin rose because of a whole plethora of different reasons, but normally just money flow because it's a new quarter. People are psychological. They believe, you know, September is always bad and they wait for the new month to come. And I think that had a lot to do with it. But just think about that. No interest raise for the next three to four years till 2024. That means no alpha. That means no return on your money. And the dollar tanked again. People were concerned about the Dixie going really high, but it tanked uh, today, probably because of this. But when people need to get alpha, they're not going to get it in their US dollar. They're just going to get debasement there. So let's look at this chart from Raul Paul. Uh, he calls it a luscious chart. And you can see here two kind of compressing wedges. One began in 2017. And the other one began at the beginning of this bull market. So what he is looking at, it's a log chart. And um, anybody who knows where wedges break, they break to the upside typically when they have this type of pattern. And the magnitude of this one, if we look back at history, what typically follows this type of wedge pattern is extremely powerful. So Raul Paul is very bullish now on Bitcoin, even though somebody said a few weeks ago he's threatening to sell all his Bitcoin. I don't think he has. He's smarter than that. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the S&P 500, even though it did spike a lot today. You can see over the last three days, S&P 500 is down negative and Bitcoin's up 17%. But the real thing to notice about this, it's act up even more than 17% actually, because this chart was done before Bitcoin added another $300. But alpha seekers, like I mentioned with interest rates, it's crazy. All the people that manage money, manage investments, they're looking at their red screens, bright red, all across the board. And then they're seeing this little green spot. What the hell is this? What is this going up 17% in three days? You know, I have this concept, I call it parking my fiat. I, I don't huddle Bitcoin, but when I have extra fiat, I stick it into Bitcoin and wait there. So if you imagine I was buying Bitcoin 48 hours ago for $41,000, I've made $7,500 already on every Bitcoin just by parking it there. So that is a crazy return. That's nearly 20% in 20, 48 hours. It's like a loan shark type returns. But that's, that's what we have now. It's crazy. And everybody's going to start seeking alpha and they need to hedge. So again, all roads, as I say, but now it's just the pace at which things are changing are just incredible. Now, this one I really have to show. And as you guys know, I'm a huge 
Michael Saylor fan, total fanboy. But I love his eloquence of how he sees data and puts out a kind of a statement based on it. Here he talks about Bitfarms. They deposited 96% of their Bitcoin production into custody this year rather than sell it in the open market. Now, if other publicly traded miners do the same, uh, basically the stock to flow is going to go to infinity. So this probably confused a lot of people, but I thought this is a really, really important thing to tackle. And as you guys know, I did a big mining video earlier this week, identify the top miners that are over one exahash and came up with ClearSpark. Got into a nice little synthetic long. That position is up over 150% in three days. But the most important thing is you've got all these other companies like HUD8 and others that basically are not selling their Bitcoin. What they are doing is they are borrowing money from places that will lend it, banks, etc., or they're issuing shares to pay their bills. They no longer have to sell Bitcoin to pay their bills. And they're all wise. They know, let's put this on our balance sheet, hold it, and just borrow cheap fiat, and then pay back less money in the future. But the question is, what is Michael Saylor getting at here? So let's do a little quick revisit, a little bit of history as to why I believe Bitcoin is deflationary. Here you see the issuance curve of Bitcoin over time, and you can see the curve is really flattening. Now, as you've always heard from me, I believe there'll never be more than 14 million Bitcoin because a ton have been lost. There's a million locked away at the Satoshi lockup, etc. There might even be only 12 to 12 to 14 million Bitcoins, but conservatively, there'll never be more than 14. At least 4.8 are completely lost. And uh, I've gone to great lengths to try and prove that. And if you look at my older videos, you'll see that. So Bitcoin is already deflationary. Now, let's look at this. So a quick reminder of what stock to flow is. So stock to flow is defined as a number of how many years at the current production rate are required to achieve the current stock. And the higher the number, the higher the price of the asset. So when you take things like Bitcoin being deflationary now more than ever, because the miners are borrowing fiat and not selling their Bitcoins anymore, there are even less uh, being mined. They're technically being mined, but they're not being put on the marketplace. So that is the stock to flow. Again, units in existence over the units mined annually. So let's compare this to example numbers today. So technically, the number of the stock of Bitcoin is 18.83 million. And the flow every year is the current rate, 328,500 Bitcoin. So the stock to flow is about 57.3 years for this to happen. Now, what is 57.3 years? The easy way to think about it is at this current issuance rate, it takes 57.3 years for the stock of Bitcoin to replenish. But of course, we know it's deflationary and it's going down. That's not going to happen. So the point that Michael Saylor is trying to make with numbers to spell it out, if you assume the stock to flow of 18.83 million as a stock, the flow is only 100. This is assuming that only about a third of the Bitcoin are going to hit the market. That makes the stock to flow of 188 years, which should make the price of Bitcoin really, really, really expensive, way more than it is now. And if you assume Bitcoin continues to be lost and people continue to huddle, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that the amount hitting the market is only 100, that would put it at 188,000 years. And that's what Michael Saylor is getting at, going to infinity. Again, between people huddling and so little supply, the price should be a lot harder. Now, to put things in perspective, how does this compare to gold? Well, the stock to flow of gold, I think, is about 62 and a half years. So the stock to flow of Bitcoin is definitely a lot higher than gold. Therefore, the multiple should be a lot higher. Therefore, the plan B stock to flow model and the cross asset model technically is valid and probably even more valid. And the point of Michael Saylor, what he was saying back in his tweet was, nobody is factoring this in when they calculate the value. They're just assuming no coins are lost and all Bitcoins hit the market, but they don't. So again, I always talked about opening the treasure chest, looking inside and seeing there's nothing in there. And that's when things will go whoosh, parabolic with a crazy supply crunch. It's going to happen. Just don't know when. Now, speaking of things going crazy, this was a, a quick tweet from Anatoly from Solana. Basically, he said, mind-blowing Solana state is adding 20,000 accounts per hour. Nearly 100 million Solana accounts right now. A lot of it driven by the whole NFT market. 
and it's exploding. So that was interesting, a little bit of Solana news I snuck in there. The other thing that's kind of really interesting to note is how the world's payment methods are changing with Web3 capabilities. So Opera out of uh, Norway, I think, is the world's first browser with Web3 capabilities. It has 400 million users, but they just partnered up with Near Protocol to, and they have a built-in wallet. And now they'll be able to support a whole bunch of uh, native crypto wallet financial transfers from within the browser with very, very low gas fees, about a thousand times cheaper than Ethereum today, even though Near is an Ethereum protocol. So that is crazy. But the real point of this is, what impact does this have in the rest of the world? So we're seeing things right now that, you know, you've got your hot wallets. I have two. Uh, you have the ability to receive and give payments on things like Twitter. Like I've got four ways to receive money on Twitter. Um, Venmo, Square, Strike, Bitcoin, Lightning Wallet, and Patreon. Crazy. And now everybody is just developing at such a crazy pace from within browsers. I've got the browser plugins for things like Phantom and MetaMask. And the sky's the limit. And then you've got your PayPals and your Squares and all the other good stuff. The question is, what are the banks doing? So this is a little rep representation. The banks are not dead, but they're not doing what they should be doing. They're not dead or alive. They got really old technology. They were relying on old ways of operating. They rely on the government. Something's got to give. Can these guys modernize at the pace that browsers are, like Opera, like hot wallets, like protocols? I don't think so. So it's going to be a very, very interesting future. And in terms of the first use case of how all of this is changing, is if you look at remittances, they are going straight to the blockchain real fast. And El Salvador is a case in point. Here you see Lebanon, 33% of all income, of all GDP in the country is remittance from outside the borders of the country. El Salvador is number two. So again, crazy times. A lot is going to change. Buckle in. The next five years will be very exciting. So let's talk a little bit about Compound and DeFi. This is from the CEO, Robert Leshner of Compound, basically threatening users if you received a large incorrect amount of Compound because of our error, blah, 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 blah. You'll be reported to the IRS and we're going to dox you. I mean, that's a very boneheaded statement to make because of their mistake to threaten people in that regard. There's better ways of going about it. So the internet doesn't forget. I wouldn't want to be this guy. <laughs> uh, people get very angry. And Coinbase were compromised. They were hacked. This is not a good thing. Um, although Coinbase, uh, I think they lost at least 6,000 user accounts. Obviously, it could be a lot higher. Through a bug, uh, please check your accounts. Make sure you have your stuff locked down with the like, YubiKeys. They did say they would reimburse everybody. They're not sure exactly what happened, but it involves some type of phishing attack or the social engineering technique to trick the victim into unknowingly disclosing login credentials to a bad actor. So be very careful. Make sure your stuff is locked down. Check your Coinbase account if you have one, just in case. That's the PSA for today. So are you not entertained? This is a little piece of fun news. Um, there is a sequel for from the Gladiator movie, considered a good movie. Some people hate it, some people love it. But uh, it's going to include Brad Pitt and George Clooney and Ridley Scott is finishing it up right now. So I thought that was a nice piece of news to share. Hope you like this comment. Hit the like and subscribe if you haven't already. And let's do some live Q&A right now. And switch cameras. Kill that. There we are. We are in. Let me just uh, see. Oh, da, da, da. Bitcoin fell under 48K. But let's go um, find out what's going on in the market. Caligula, what would your dream guest to interview on this channel? Ooh. Uh, I really, really like a guy called Robert Breedlove. Um, might sound a bit weird, but I love the way he looks at macro and the world and money supplies and everything else and his philosophy of life. Um, I think he would be the most interesting person right now for me to talk to. We're very much aligned and uh, I think it'd be a great conversation. Great question, Caligula. Nav, uh, do you plan to sell some Sol at the top or HODL? It depends how far it goes and what's happening with the protocol. If I see the protocol continuing on its rampant adoption right now, um, there'd be no reason to sell. 
it's just going to keep going up in terms of market cap. And there's a long way to go. And my whole thesis to go in so hard into Sol in the first place was it was so drastically undervalued to other protocols. I knew it was only a matter of time before it popped. First uh, target is Cardano to beat their market cap is going to happen real soon. I reckon my plan was for it to happen before the end of the year. It might actually happen this month at the way things are going. And then it'll start taking up to 20% of Ethereum's market cap. So that's it's always been my theory. It never changes. My numbers don't change. They're always fixed. Ryan, thoughts uh, when projects start burning? Who loses short and long-term? Celsius did the same today. So it's all about scarcity. You know, it's like a, a trendy thing right now. There's a lot of uh, chains out there that basically they give you, say, 20% APY on your money. But what they're doing is they're just pulling it out of their inflation. They're just, you know, like you've got... I won't mention any protocols that do this, but a lot of them. That's why it's very important to look at the tokenomics and the inflation and the dumpage, because sometimes it's fake. Now, if you can turn something deflationary, it makes it very scarce and it makes it very valuable. And that's what Celsius are doing. That's what Avalanche is trying to do, but they're very, very far away from it. That's what Ethereum will be doing. That's what Bitcoin already is, even though they say it's not, as I just proved the uh, deflationary nature of Bitcoin as well. So nobody loses, but the people that hold the assets, the hard assets, the pristine assets, the deflationary assets go up in value, so they benefit. Those that don't own them yet, don't. So as I think I mentioned in the video yesterday, the day before, everybody, if you don't have hard assets, get some. Easiest one, of course, is Bitcoin, um, but uh, everybody needs some hard assets. Joe Waterhouse, how does your uh, KuCoin score on your model? Also, what are your thoughts on the exchange tokens? It depends how much functionality you get out of them, uh, but KuCoin scored quite well. So, it's happening again when I... Don't talk all day and then I start talking a lot. I get, you know, my throat gets really dry. I have a humidifier here and it's not working. So Bora Bora Bora, why do you own my strategy and Bitcoin? Why not just Bitcoin? Because it's much easier for me to uh, do kind of financial jujitsu with my Bitcoin, with my micro strategy positions. I can buy leaps and I can do synthetic longs and I can sell calls against my positions, as I call the third leg when things are getting lofty. And I can make far more money than just hodling Bitcoin alone. And it's much easier for me to hedge with the instruments that are available in the marketplace. That's why I do that. It's even better. It's easier for me than using instruments that are available for Bitcoin hedging, believe it or not. So that's why I have both. And uh, MicroStrategy is the gift that keeps on giving. Um, Nav, your thoughts on Stake and Sol on Excess Wallet so far? Good. No problem. Real easy, real simple. Again, I think uh, a lot of the strength of the whole Solana ecosystem is ease of use and user friendliness, which will drive a lot more adoption as well. Um, so Crypto Captain Ron, are there any other top 10 tokens that you would trade ADA for right now? Or do you think ADA is going to run up soon? Uh, ADA has been um, consistent over the last month. I did a post earlier today about year-to-date performance I think 90 day, 60 day, 30 day uh, performance of Cardano compared to others. So there's a, it just needs, I just need to see before it runs, you need to see adoption happening and it's not happening at the pace that other chains are growing. And that's the problem. Uh, despite their big trade show and partnership announcements, it's just not moving. I think it went up five or 6% today, but um there's all the other chains are just growing much faster. And that's what it's about. It's about network effect. So I do not see, um, I, you know, I see Cardano going to $3, $3.50, maybe four on a good day. If the market goes really ballistic, what people tend to do is if the other chains are all really expensive and they've all gone up a few hundred percent, people will look around and say, what's next? What's number 11 or number six? And they start buying that if it hasn't run. So I think that could happen and that could take us up to $4. And by that time, I have a small bag of Cardano in full disclosure, um, but my Solana bag is now 30 times bigger today. So Frodo, can you make any of your TradingView charts available to capitalists and TradingView accounts? I can do that. Yes, I think I can. I, I don't do much on the social side of TradingView. And the problem though with my charts is 
I tweak them a lot depending what I'm looking at. So I've got different settings. I have, I have three separate core charts for just Bitcoin, believe it or not. And I look at them at different times for identifying different opportunities. So in the wrong hands, they could be misleading. So you, I need to do a tutorial as to how I use the different charts for different scenarios, whether I am sniping versus defining a long-term, medium-term hedge, etc. So the, it's all different. So that's why I don't actually share them. But I will think about doing that photo. Thanks for your note. Steve Pat, has your opinion changed how much with ADA since the new projects have come out? Also, how do you feel about Tezos? I don't like Tezos. And regarding Cardano, my, period, my opinion on Cardano has always been the same. And I always get questions, always get hate. I think, you know, somebody described it as this fancy car without wheels. I need to see the wheels. I need to see it going fast. And until I see it moving, going fast, I'm not buying in. So that's me. <laughs> Show me the money. Follow the money. Show me the adoption. Show me the dApps, the DEXs, the TVLs, all that stuff at exponential growth rates. Like, like the stat I just showed you with the Solana network, they're adding whatever a huge amount of uh, users per hour. That's what I want to see with Cardano. Hope that helps, Steve. Uh, Jeeves, how are you, buddy? With the government potentially coming after Roth conversion, better switch to Roth 401k. Thoughts? I haven't been tracking that stuff. The government threatens to go after different types of retirement accounts and find ways to fund the huge deficits they have. But I think it'll be very hard to push some of these changes through. So I'm not concerned. Um, and also remember the promise the president made not to increase anybody's taxes, anybody who earns more than uh, less uh, less than 400,000, I think it was. Uh, so it'd be fine. But they are going after people that, um, what's his name, Tim Draper or one of these guys. Um, no, the, the Peter Thiel, I think he has like a few billion dollars in his IRA that's tax-free, which is made up of PayPal stock. Uh, so they, they might go after those guys, but I wouldn't worry too much about it, to be honest, but I will dig into it. Igor, what's your opinion on return to normalcy stocks? Would you sell them, namely Air Canada and some crew stocks at a 20% loss now, put money to Bitcoin, Tesla? Yeah, the uh, the truth is, I think, and I don't want to get political here, but I look at a lot of endemic data. It's not a pandemic anymore. It's endemic. It's here with us. Uh, economies have now realized, okay, let's just get on with it. Let's just live with it. Let's stop locking people down. Let's just open everything up and and just you know take it as kind of a flu deluxe that will have serious ramifications for people that have comorbidities, etc. So from that perspective, that kind of, okay, toss all the lockups out the window and just get on with life, which is what they do actually in certain states in the US and certain countries like Sweden, and they've been kind of successful. Um, but I wouldn't, I, I, I think the world has changed. Uh, I have been looking at things like United Airlines, um, but when I look at now how the business world, so if, I think 85 to 90% of all the margin for United Airlines came from business air travel, selling first class tickets and business class tickets to business travelers short notice. That's where they made all the money. That's gone. Business people now, they're used to working from home. They're used to not flying to New York to do an interview on CNBC. Everything is Zoom, which love it or not, or hate it, that's just the new world we are in. So I think it's never gonna go back. I used to be somebody who flew over 300,000 miles a year. Uh, I, I hated it and I'm very happy never to set foot on a plane as long as I live. Unless of course it's to go somewhere fun like Bora Bora. Um, so that's it. So I, I do think, and then cruise lines, the thought of anybody jumping on a cruise ship, that's just a whole disease vector, is just mind-blowing. So that's my take. I would definitely get out of those stocks, Igor. And sorry if I went on a bit long on that one, but it's important. Um, Aragon, uh, some are still calling for a retest of Bitcoin 39k to 40k. Do you see this happening? Uh, James, for 2024, um, I, know, I think that might be a separate issue. And no, I think it's a... Uh, I think we're off to the races now. Uh, Bitcoin is over 48,000. We're going straight to 50. From 50, we'll go to 63. 
At 63, 64, we'll face some resistance. We might test it three or four times. And then it'll be break off mode. It'll be all to new, new all time highs. You just can't deny the adoption and the scarcity, 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 scarcity. The three words as to why I fell in love with Bitcoin in the first place. It's so hard. It's so pristine. And I don't see us going back down. Um, no, not at all. There's always a 5% chance that things could crash inwards, but uh, it's highly unlikely, I would say. So, uh, AG, and by the way, congratulations. We minted uh, about five or six new whole coiners just the last two days, right at the nick of time, two today. And congratulations to people who stayed the course and they FOMO'd in last minute because it's going to be really hard to be a whole coiner um, in the future. But keep on trying if you haven't. Curly girl, um, do you think Sol will keep its upward trajectory until around 850 by December or will it dip? Uh, are there any suggestions for staking companies in Canada? I don't know what the staking companies in Canada means, but regarding the trajectory, I think um, my Solana target, my intermediate target was about $500 when Solana was at 20 bucks. Uh, my low end target was 218 or 220 or so. It already hit that. And my high end target is about 700. I don't have 850 on the cards, but if, if Ethereum starts going above 12K, $850 for Solana is extremely possible because it'll, uh, on a relative cap, market cap percentage, it is completely feasible to do that. Nav, any regulatory risk on ethsol.ada AVAX? Uh, the older the protocol, the more decentralized the protocol, the less risk there is. But all the what the regulators want to do, and this is what people are afraid of. So the states and other countries, they want either two things. One, protect the banks or get taxes. And the regulators want to protect the customers from losing their crypto. So for example, if there's a shoddy you know, crypto lending operation and they got poor security and you give them your 10 Bitcoin and they lose it, you're screwed in the terms and conditions. This is what the regulators want to protect uh, people from. And that's their whole angle, not to shut it down. Uh, when it comes to Ethereum is safe, Bitcoin is safe. Solana may get a few smacks on the wrist for issuing securities. Uh, Polkadot, maybe the same thing. Cardano is on the edge because they've been around for such a long time. So they may get away with it. Uh, they will not be a prime target. And Avalanche will be in the same boat as Polkadot. So from that perspective, it's like a, a spectrum of risk. And that's one of the reasons I built the Coin pendium, crypto compendium, uh, because it's very, very important to know exactly where they do lay on that framework. So, either way, uh, I'm not concerned. The upside is far bigger than the downside. And you've seen the type of shenanigans that companies do and the penalties from the SEC. Don't do it again. 10 million bucks. Or, you know, JP Morgan fixing metal markets for decades and decades. They get fined every quarter. $50 million. I mean, they make that over their lunch break. So it's nothing. Um, not a big deal. And thank you for a donation as well. Jeff Hammerberg, Dale, Toy Story, Glenn J, Cryptolicious, Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary, now at 7% portfolio, exceeding his gold holdings. That is true. I heard that this morning. So it's funny. Even hyper conservative latecomers to the space are jumping in hard as quick as they can. So well done, Mr. O'Leary. Um, Kiwi Robin, thank you. And a prost of Oktoberfest. <laughs> it's so funny. I was I saw the big uh, Stein glasses the other day. I'm going to get one. And I'm going to have a beer with you guys to celebrate Oktoberfest, especially if things keep on going like this. Uh, Greg M., we are James. <laughs> we're all James. Oh, no. Capona, thank you so much. And Joe, the rehabber, snacks for the pets. Yes, we have a lot of stuff uh, going on. We actually sold our first ETF, which means uh, money for uh, children's hospitals. And we have a bunch of pets coming this weekend. So uh, wait for that. Uh, stay tuned. Ian the Herb, why do you dislike Hex and Richard Hart? Please be specific. No, I will not. Because when I, if I ever say anything that criticize people, an army come after me and I don't have time for that shit. So I'm just going to skip it. But Google him, Google Hex. It's all out there. And there's also a hundred videos as well. You don't need me to say things that are already out there. So, but thank you for the question and uh, just be careful. 
big duck kiwi. Should I sell that now at break even for more soul? Um, well, my target for this bull market for VeChain was always about 30 cents, 33 cents. I know a lot of people talk about it going to a dollar. I don't ever see that happening. It can't with all of the poor tokenomics that it has. Um, yeah, you, you, the odds of... See, VeChain had a big move today as well. I think it broke 10 cents up from eight. So um, it's hard to say. If it does go to 30, it's a 3x from here. Um, Solana will three, maybe three and a half X from here. So it'll be kind of tight. But there's, I think there's a lot less risk with Solana than VeChain. There's so many unknowns, especially with the China connection for VeChain too. It's one of the reasons I don't like it too much. Um, TJ Abney, trying to get my mom into Bitcoin. She feels she's too late since it runs so much. Should I wait for the pullback to buy her some? Um, if you wait for a pullback, you might, don't hold your breath because again, the things that I see right now are just extremely bullish. I think this weekend, things could go bonkers. Last night at the end of my video, I said, I was like so giddy. I said, this is going to be a good night. It's going to be a good night because you can see all the on-chain data uh, lining up so nicely. I think everybody needs to have a little bit. Uh, I did a video on how to DCA into Bitcoin with like five diff five or eight different steps as to how much you need to buy first. And once you get a taste, like get, get her 500 bucks worth, uh, buy it on Cash App or something simple like that, and then teach her how to layer into it and just get as much as you can. Um, but no, the future is still very bright for Bitcoin, but it's not as good as buying it 48 hours ago for 41,000 or... 30, 29,000 uh, a few weeks back. So hope that helps. And good job for getting your mom in. It'll be life-changing. Handel Carter, does GBTC fall hard as BTC falls in the bear market? Yes, it will. Uh, but I don't believe Bitcoin will fall anywhere near what it used to fall at the past. But that's a function of how high we go in the blow-off top, if there is one. If it's just gradual accumulation by institutions and pension funds, you know, these people aren't going to trade it or sell it. They're going to huddle it, just like the miners are huddling it. So from that perspective, I think we're safe. We're safe. So everybody, don't expect a big retracement, especially not an 85%. It might be 50%. SpongeBob, um, thank you so much. Uh, targets for DOT in this bull run? Oh, I have to pull it up. Um, I think, hold on a second. Um, got to pull this up because I just modified them recently. And I have to, I think it's an old model. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Target, target, target. I think uh, it's about $98 is my target. So we'll see. But uh, Polkadot, I think they're going to unleash a whole bunch of goodness. They already have so much goodness going on. And again, I think it's a very undervalued project. So hope that helps. Santiago, how do you set new buy order limits when you get a pump like today? Well, I stopped buying Bitcoin. I only buy it at 41,000. Um, then I look for other things to buy in. But for me, I always want my 2x plus, 2x to 3x return on assets. And I can get that very easily trading options and equities. Like I did two trades this week and both made over 100% within 24 to 48 hours. So from that perspective, I don't need... I, I use... Bitcoin as a safe place to store my fiat. That's my whole philosophy with Bitcoin. It's not a, an investment vehicle per se. It's like a safe way to park money that'll double or triple or quadruple uh, very easily. Uh, so in terms of layering in now, when I look at all the cryptos as well, and I've been looking, uh, the last cryptos I bought, I think two days ago, Bitcoin, a little bit of Aave, Matic, a little bit of Polkadot, and a lot of Solana. So I bought Solana at 121 and a tiny bit at 136 or 135. Bill Clements, um, I need someone to explain why people hate on XRP. All the research I'm doing, actual usage and attention is mainstream. Why do people think it won't work or grow? Well, Bill, my simple take, what I never liked about XRP is the management team and the fact that they have 51 billion tokens in escrow that they could dump at any time. You know, they, it's so funny. They were saying they're going to invest $250 million in some new project. I think it was an XRP NFT play or something. All they do is just 
reach into their escrow and grab some and just sell it for a dollar. Hence the continual downward pressure on XRP. So it is critical. I mentioned it yesterday as well. You guys, I, I, I get off the soapbox. But look at the tokenomics of every project carefully. Look at the management team. There are your answers. Um, so also, the other thing with uh, XRP, they have a lot of competition now. They didn't have competition four years ago. And they got that big gray cloud, black cloud over the head of the SEC. And the SEC isn't going to go away and they want their pound of flesh. So I like clean, safe assets with good, honest management teams. You're investing in the people. Remember that. So uh, Raloon uh, was waiting for this weekend to invest. Uh, would you wait for Monday for a bit of a retracement or is it already too late? Yeah, I'm seeing things. I'm seeing incredibly bullish signs everywhere I look. I saw them last night. I saw them yesterday afternoon. And uh, this weekend could be one of those crazy weekends where you go to bed at midnight and you wake up at 2 a.m. to go to the bathroom and you see Bitcoin's up another $4,000. That could very easily happen. Um, sorry if I was a bit graphic there, but <laughs> it's just it's crazy world. So I think this weekend could be strong. I think what's happening now is a little bit of um, institutional FOMO. So all the people now, they're looking for alpha and they're not getting it in other places. All the other markets are hard to buy or at tops and they see this as a simple safe hedge. So I think the adoption is just going to increase. Um, so, but Mondays historically have been weak. But if we go up 10% over the weekend, we might fall 8% on Monday. So you'll still be cheaper to buy today than on Monday, perhaps. So think of it that way as well. Uh, but just look at all the on-chain analytics. It's bonkers. Um, Shabir Ahmed, how are you? Uh, I'll be coming into 100K soon. I'll invest in crypto. I'm nervous that I'll be entering the market too late. Can you advise? Yes. Um, be very careful now, everybody. As I always say, we're halfway through the bull market. Um, like buying Bitcoin at 50K. Yeah, we might get to 90K, 100K. Might even go more, but you're only getting a double. Um, Bitcoin is the safest. Um, I still think there's some opportunity in a lot of things people are asking me today. Is it too late to buy Solana at 150, 160? And the answer is no, because it's going to 400, 500. Not financial advice, but pretty certain it will. Especially now we're seeing much more strength in things like Ethereum, much more Ethereum funds coming on board as well. So we'll see. But yeah, it's nowhere near as good as it was a month ago or two months ago where you could buy Bitcoin under $30,000. That was the time to just go in or even earlier in the year as well. So I hope that helps and gives you a little bit of guidance. Copycat, with all the news on ADA, do you feel if this continues, it will build enough intrinsic value to become a fast horse? Your thoughts on Charles? Uh, I'm not going to talk about Charles. Charles has a great sense of humor. And he's a smart guy. But I'll say it. This is always my thesis. Uh, I worked for a long time watching projects, watching companies, valuing software companies, stuff like that. And uh, you always look at what they're building against. And my problem with Cardano is they were building against Ethereum four years ago. That was their target. The world is a very different place. Ethereum is suffering today because their stuff is old and kludgy and slow and expensive. Gas fees are ugh, very upsetting. So the world is different. The world is now the Solanas of the world. So I said to somebody today, is, when, you, when you show me the adoption, when you show me the partnerships, when you show me the TVLs, the DEXs, the development, the easy use, all that stuff happening at the scale, that's happening with Avalanche and Elrond, Luna, Solana, etc. Then talk to me. But I just think, as I mentioned at the beginning, it's like a fancy, beautiful sports car with no wheels. It's got to get moving fast. When it, when it Once it gets to 100 miles an hour, then I'm interested. But until I see that speed across our 20 metrics that we look at, and we're nowhere, there's no speed at all, it's stopped in the garage, um, I can't, I can't say anything. So 
Sorry about that. That's always been my thesis, and I can speak honestly and more openly now to you all because uh, nobody's going <laughs> to throw hate at me. So Chad G, retire on videos in the pipeline. Would love to revise Bitcoin ETH for 2026 and 7.5% plus inflation living expenses on Tesla. Yes, I'm working on that. It's just been such a busy week with so much other stuff. So I have like a pipeline of 200 things I need to do and there just aren't enough hours in the day. But Chad, it's coming. Um, but it's kind of also hard to do. It's, it's really fun to do these retire on videos when things are cheap. And <laughs> now when things are expensive, like if I say, well, you can retire on a Bitcoin in Liechtenstein for only $800,000 today in 2026. People get disappointed, but it's much more fun to do them when Bitcoin's at $9,000 or Ethereum's at 600 bucks or Tesla's at $40. Um, like, uh, like I did the retire on Solana video. Um, that was kind of possible, but it's harder to do them now because I don't want to give people a bad taste, but I will do uh, an updated one with my little trifecta and I'm working on updated uh, Tesla models as well. Phil and Nader, uh, what's up with Ada? Everybody is interested in Ada. I've said enough about Cardano. Um, yeah, show me, show me this sports car over a hundred miles an hour. That's it. And just, just, just look at all, all the metrics. Look at the growth of the competitors. Look at the speed of the competitors. Look at the security of the competitors. Look at the adoption of the competitors. Look at the user friendliness of the competitors. There's your answer. Juju John. Got half your retire on crypto portfolio. Good job. Got all coin, uh, just half the holdings. Just sold my Tudor watch for 3K and want to blow it. <laughs> Solana or Matic? Um, Matic, I think, has more potential to 4X. Uh, I think, you know, Solana could 3X, Matic should 4X. So go 50 50, Juju. And a good idea, you know, um, it's, it's funny. I sold uh, a lot of my stuff last year, like cameras and boats and all that crap. And just so getting getting rid of, you know, who needs a watch? Who wears a watch anyway? You know, we have our phones with us. That's a watch. Um, you don't need these types of things where you can invest. And then five or 10 years from now, you can get those luxury items back. So good move. Craig M, have you looked into the next Earth Metaverse yet? Thoughts, or if you could do a deep dive soon. Craig, great question. We are doing a metaverse deep dive, uh, the whole world. And we've got another couple of interesting deep dives coming as well. One uh, early next week, which is something we should all be very aware of. It may sound like a tedious subject, but it has a big ramification for many things you might be investing in. And Posturante James, how can we find out beforehand if GBTC is going to Use rehypothecated Bitcoin in its eventual ETF. I'm with Caitlin Long. It's utter folly and dangerous. Yeah, I own GBTC in a retirement account, and uh, I don't follow Caitlin Long, but we'll see. There, you know, it, the the nature of the beast. Everything is rehypothecated. You think Robinhood doesn't rehypothecate your Bitcoin or your Tesla shares or your Google shares? Everything is rehypothecated. This is the way the world has been working for the longest time. So I wouldn't sweat that too much. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. Uh, Assassinos. Hope I got that right. What's your compendium score on the coin Pundi X? It performed horribly after token swap earlier this year. Pundi X. I don't know if I have it in there. I never heard of it. And if I never heard of it, odds are I, we haven't analyzed it. Yeah, uh, it's number 4,795. I only analyze the top 300, so sorry about that, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why do people invest in this stuff? It's just, I don't know, beyond me. Very risky. You're you're taking your money and you're hoping for that 1% hit, um, especially as a medium of exchange. How many, many medium of exchange plays are there? There's tons. So... Pick a category that has a real value. Pick the two leaders. Go in hard. That's it. That's that's what you do in any any investment, whether you're investing in electric vehicles or search engines or retailers. Pick the best or the number two player 
and go in hard. Don't mess with the number 5,000 player because you will lose. Connor Hoddle, I know you're busy, but would you ever consider posting some healthy diet related content again? Yes, I have a whole bunch. In fact, um, I have got literally 10 years of content that I could share about nutrition, diet, cancer prevention, etc. So I, I'll try to do that, but I just don't have enough hours. But I'm trying, I do my shakes and I do my morning routines. Uh, we're going to do one actually with a mixture of um, mushroom additives or not additives, whatever you take, pull out of mushrooms. So that's coming, Connor. So hang tight for that. And thank you for your donation as well. Playing with pastels, pastels, broke bank vegan, your energy always uplifts us. I am exhausted. I've been up since three o'clock. I am wrecked. Um, Minitwiri, I saw you previously talk to Phaeton. I bought in the IEO thanks to you better than Solana. We'll see. A lot of risk there, but good job getting some. I tried to, and I just didn't have time to get myself organized. Learn to surf waves. Uh, new segment, invest stories. Let's start with that terrible trade you did at 21. Uh, <laughs> I've covered that a few times. Uh, Neil Aurora, get some rest. Uh, Simon Eastwood, hopefully a cousin of Clint Eastwood. Uh, Jungzilla, global party people with cool music. Guillermo Costa and Catcher AD. Boot Boy Crypto and GIMD. LH, DB Stud, Snowfall, Papillon Lover, Mark Cosgrove. Good night, all. I'm off to get a little bit of rest. We are still staying above 48,000, which is a critical level. You can see, actually, the chart's very interesting because anytime it dips, it's bought up. So people are buying the dips, but these are professional buyers. These are programmatic traders. So I don't see us going down um, for now. Good night, everybody. See you tomorrow morning for the quickie. 10 a.m. No, 8, 9, 10 a.m. Pacific.